Okay, guys. Um, well, here we go. We have this interesting video from um, Obese to Beast. <laughs> Same, am I right? <laughs> but anyway, it's about Tess Holiday. Tess Hol, uh, you know, Tess Holiday is a plus size model. So, yeah. Anyway, let's watch. So today we are going to be talking about two people that, if you've been watching my channel for a while, okay. you'll know that are like the antithesis of what I really disagree with in the health space, the the weight loss space, the fat acceptance space, that kind of area, right? So we're going to be first talking about Gwyneth Paltrow, who if you are not familiar with what she does online, um, she's not. like a, you know, super somebody talked about goop and then I never looked into it because I'm like, what is goop? But it's just goop. That's all I have to say, bro. So, okay. Uh, famous movie star. She was in like Iron Man and a bunch of other stuff. But she also owns this company called Goop, which yep. is just like probably the like most quintessential wellness, like hippy dippy, over the top, like just unnecessary BS, like wellness stuff that's out there, right? And so Gwyneth Paltrow, and then the other person we're going to be talking about is Tess Holiday, who I'm sure most of you know how I feel about Tess, but she is like the poster child for uh, fat acceptance or health at every size, and you know how I feel about that. And so recently, Gwyneth was actually on a podcast or something like that. I mean, there's a million podcasts now, but she was on some sort of podcast where she was sharing, she decided to share her wellness routine, and that sparked a lot of people being upset. And Tess was one of the main people that was upset by this clip. And Why? What does she? What does she do? Like nothing. <laughs> uh, I wonder. Now, I disagree with both of these people, okay? So it's kind of a weird situation to be put kind of in the middle, um, or to put myself in the middle, more is correct. But we're going to go over this clip from the uh, podcast, and then we'll go over what Tess had to say about the, the clip. So this okay. is the original clip that Tess decided to react to. What's your wellness routine look like now? I eat dinner early in the evening. I do a nice intermittent fast. I usually eat something about 12. Okay. Um, and in the morning, I'll have some things. So intermittent fasting, my understanding of it, it's just where you only eat something within like a particular window. So like you might only you start like let's say you only eat within like an eight hour window. So you'll let's say you start eating at twelve in the afternoon. You can't eat anything else after eight o'clock. Um, I guess it's just some kind of way to regulate your eating habits. So that's fine. I think it's cool. Whatever. I don't. I don't think that there's anything particularly like inherently dangerous about that. You're just kind of training your body to have different. Um, eating protocols so it's like whatever <clears throat> that won't spike my blood sugar right so I, I have coffee so it's funny because i actually do technically i do intermittent fasting i don't like to label it anything because it's so frustrating whenever you do something Not labeling king like people want to label it so much and i feel like intermittent fasting i know there are probably people that are watching this that do intermittent fasting and like if you do it i'm not trying to you know yuck your yum or anything like that like literally i said i do it right but i don't label it because i just i just really don't eat first thing in the morning i usually eat when i get home from the gym which a lot of times is around 11 to 1 depending on when i woke up and so you know a lot of times i will have fasted for you know 12 hours if not more pretty often okay. and but i don't think it's like some huge secret it's just it makes it so it's easier for me to you know be the calories that i want to be but i'm just not hungry in the morning so i don't want to force myself to eat anyways and it, it works out for me especially because i eat quite a bit at night and so when i wake up in the morning i'm just not hungry at all right and so okay. I don't know. I just, the whole intermittent fasting thing, I think, has been blown out of proportion, in my opinion. But I really like. Is that the criticism Tess Holiday is going to have? That intermittent fasting is like just bad on face value? Because I don't, I don't think it matters. As long as you're not starving yourself, it really doesn't matter. And intermittent fasting isn't about starving yourself. You might be hungry, but your body will, like, your body will, like, really like adjust somewhat to that type of eating, like, habit or protocol. So who cares? Soup for lunch. <clears throat> um, I have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days. Try to do one hour of movement. So I'll either take a walk That's or smart. I'll do Pilates or I'll do my Tracy Anderson. That's a nice idea. I'd say everybody should get to the habit of doing, like, a half hour of moving every day. It's a good idea. It's a great place to start. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand people who can't eat in the morning. I love eating in the morning. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. That's my, that's my jambo. That's my jamboree, bro. It makes me literally... <laughs> that makes me happy. I love I love eating. That's why I'm fat. I got to obviously work, I've been working on it, but damn. You know, damn. So people were um saying like, "Oh, she only eats bone broth for lunch." And if that's the case, that's probably not enough. Uh that's obviously a everything that we've heard is very low, but yeah, I think one of the lot. most common things and I do think this is a problem that you'll see well, in a she might just be underreporting her food. Also, I wonder what you do when you eat bone broth. Like I I don't know, I've been eating bone marrow a little bit here and there. I had some oh, I had some ham bone marrow. Maybe maybe come. It tasty good, is all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> But that is like a problem, if I'm assuming this correctly. But some people will underreport the amount of food that they eat, um, and then people end up like almost starving themselves, and then they end up eating too much because they're so hungry. 
right? And that's one of the problems is like you got to make sure you eat enough. I think that if you want to start dieting and you're going to track your calories, which is always a good idea, uh, it could be a little difficult, but like you should just eat like whatever the cap says is your maintenance calories, maybe even like a little higher and then just work your way down based on if you're losing weight or not. Because sometimes these apps can like really under report the amount of food that you need. Um, and then you end up kind of starving yourself and you get so hungry that you just like, I have to eat something and it kind of fucks you up. A lot of these like clips where people will share their, we've all seen it. Like it's a huge thing on TikTok right now, right? Where it's like my morning routine and it's like all this beautiful stuff and all these yeah, like and like dog, you don't have like to pee. be us. Half the stuff they don't do every day I like to pee or first. they do it every once in a while and okay. they make sure they have a perfect day picked out, blah, 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 right? So like, does she do this actually every single day? I don't no, know. Does she not. eat only bone broth every single day? I don't know. I mean, it's certainly possible. I absolutely wouldn't recommend that, like only eating that, but who knows? Like, it's just like so Maybe. i do think it's a problem that people will hear what someone else does and they'll uh, think they, they try need to, to do it that's why i don't yeah that is a big problem with everybody it's not even just weight loss even in uh, when it comes to working out i've there's so many times that i've looked at what i was doing even if it was successful and i was putting numbers on like my lifts and i would be like oh what is this what is dan green doing you know what's brian shaw doing what's this guy doing why am i you know and even if i was making progress like you you don't have to <clears throat> oh you don't have to emulate somebody that's successful to be successful you know, like, for instance, if you want to bring it to streaming, there's a lot of content creators that want to be big streamers like Asmongold or Moist Critical or well, maybe not Moist Critical. I don't know how much he streams. He, he's more of like a content, but you get my point. And they'll be like, oh, I got to stream 12 hours a day. Right. That makes sense. They're streaming 12 hours a day. Look at how popular they are. I have to stream 12 hours a day. The problem is, is that they have enough money to have other people do the real work for them, which is editing. The marketing work is more is more difficult. The editing, the th uh, the thumbnails, <coughs> the video clips, the th th that's more important. And what happens is my fucking nose itches so much is that you focus on the incorrect thing and you think you're doing the right way, but you're not. You're going you're actually doing everything the wrong way. And then it stifles your ability to get popular because you're not doing it correctly. You're better off. Like, let's say you want to be a big old video game streamer and you love playing Hello Kitty. Then maybe stream um, two or three hours a day consistently. I don't stream consistently, but I also don't really have to. I'm more of a video creator than I am like a, than a streamer. But consistently... Maybe a four, you know, that's fine, depending on how much time you have to devote. I mean, if you're working a job, you might want to only do two, like, you know, two hours a day and then spend, like, put just as much time into editing your stuff, you know? So maybe stream for two hours and play your game and then make a YouTube channel and then make, uh, maybe make, like, what, like, maybe make a stream highlights where you put 15 minutes of your stream up and then maybe get one clip from every stream <clears throat> and put that up on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram. Hey, baby, how are you doing? And Instagram, because people need to watch you and make sure you have consistent streaming time so that people know where to find you and when to find you. And then if that gets popular and you start getting donations, you might be able to go, oh, maybe I'll pay an editor. Maybe I'll do that. You kind of have to go through the correct motions. But like when you emulate somebody that you like, because it does make sense, but when you emulate them too much, you don't really realize that you're hurting yourself because you're doing it the wrong way like to do that many full day of eating. That's why I don't like to share what I'm doing, my exact workout routine, my exact eating, because I don't, I don't want people to copy me because it's th what I do works for me. <clears throat> There's a lot of people right? And so what area. you should do is what you should do, not what I do, right? Like obviously there I are tips do. and stuff that people can share, yeah, but sure. I just, I don't see really much value in sharing exactly what you do at every single moment of your day. Yeah. Because and on top of that, there are people who think that they know what, like there's people who do well and they know what they're doing, but they don't know exactly what they're doing. Like they, j it just kind of comes natural to them or they've just kind of figured different things out that have worked for them. And so they may not even necessarily be able to give you advice. They might like think that they're doing well, but they may not. I, mean, I guess I could be that person too, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct here. Um, so, you know, you don't want to look at somebody. They might go like, oh, yeah, you know, those big streamers are streaming all day. You should just do that. Stream all day, every day. Hit that grind. I disagree. I think the advertisement is much more, you know. Than <clears throat> just being entertaining, which if that's what you're watching it for, that's fine. right? I, I do think that that's okay. But so many people just get so caught up in like, I need to do exactly that when it just might not work. Like a lot of people, intermittent fasting. I've talked about this story before. My sister-in-law found out that she was diabetic because she was doing intermittent fasting. Damn. Because like her blood sugar all messed up, and that's how she ended up finding out that she was uh, uh, she, that she was diabetic. And so, um, it's not like you know, say be careful if you do do intermittent fasting. Make sure that you you know you don't have any issues like that. It, it wasn't like it was type two; it was like type one. So there, there was no, there was no uh, reason that she would have thought that that was a problem. Right? Interesting. Okay. And then I get in the sauna. I dry brush and I get in the sauna. So I do my infrared sauna for thirty minutes. And then for dinner, I try to eat.
<laughs> stuff the it sauna. just screams that i have a lot of money it's just like oh okay yeah, let me get my infrared sauna and then the dry brushing dude i remember when this was first going around so many dry people brushing? were commenting on my videos and i still hear it every once in a while not as much <coughs> as like 2018 i feel like 2017 2018 but around those years dude i would get so many comments of like you have loose skin you need to do dry brushing dry brushing will fix your loose skin blah, the fuck blah, blah, is dry brushing dude. i'm telling you if something like that actually fixed your loose skin it wouldn't be a secret like you wouldn't need to tell people about it, it would be out there everyone would know about it right Ugh. you know according to paleo so lots of vegetables it's <laughs> paleo dry body brushing Dry, unclogs pores in the exfoliation process. It also helps detoxify your skin. Oh, it sounds like a bunch of bullshit, but okay, whatever. Really important for me to support. So if you don't know what paleo is, it's like the most, the easiest way to explain it is like eat like the caveman. That's kind of what and they would, that's how they would berries. market it. So I it's, it's love eating nuts, by the way. Oh, I love a nice thick nut. You know what I mean? We actually have quite a bit of meat, um, <clears> and a lot of vegetables, um, not as many grains, nuts and seeds. Um, it's like if, if you've ever done CrossFit, it's it, for a long time it was very pushed in the CrossFit scene. It ends up, a lot of times there's a lot of fat <coughs> involved. It, it can work. It can be fine. Um, it's, it's, it ends up being pretty low carb, higher fat. The, I think the reason that people find success in it is because it's like very low carb so that it just kind of auto regulates you from eating too many carbs, which people eat too many of. And it's high protein. So you lose muscle faster and you maintain more of your muscle as you lose weight. Um, just try to eat more protein and you'll be fine. I mean, try to have just a vegetable every meal and eat some more protein, bro. And fucking, you know, pour it, pour, eat, drink your drinks through your, like your protein shake through your asshole because it, it absorbs faster. <laughs> uh, that's my best. <laughs> I don't even, I think that's true, but don't do it. I think that there's like more absorption membranes in your butthole, in your booty hole. But don't do that. That's bizarre. So weirdo. And then why would you think moderate that? protein is what the diet. Why would you even ends think that, bro? That eat paleo because of just the amount of fat that you get from a lot of the nuts, and then like the the different like nuts. oils you might use, and the butters. A lot of times people eat like tons of like Kerrygold butter when they're on paleo. Kerrygold um, butter. And so you know, <clears throat> I don't know, it, I, like yeah, I, I mean that's not terrible, but I don't know. It's just silly. Port my detox. <laughs> One of the uh, top comments. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's still here. Um, <laughs> Almond Mom Final Boss. This literally sounds like a colonoscopy prep. <laughs> this one right here. What is she detoxing? The bone broth? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. But then, um, this was, so this is Tess Holiday's uh, stitch. So we're going to go over this as well. But I really like soup for lunch. Um, I have bone broth for lunch a lot. You know, okay. what I find most mental about this is that we've known for years that she's okay with glorifying her eating disorder. And I'm okay. not judging because I have an eating disorder. Okay. Bone broth is not a suitable meal. And then to end your day with I just guess. eating vegetables, but yet people continue to give her airtime, to give her a platform, to take her. I just want to say that basically everything that Tess says here could be said about her. Yeah, well, I think that she, well, yeah, I guess, well, yeah, I guess she's not saying that. She says that she also has an eating disorder, but she doesn't make it clear, I guess. I think the bigger thing is that is she going to counter it with good advice or is she just going to say that this is bad advice? Um, because if she said, hey, like, this is a bad advice. First of all, I don't think that we have to go to the point of saying she has an eating disorder. I think that this fucking weird diagnosis culture that we have, oh, I have an eating disorder. Oh, I have ADHD. Oh, I have autism. Oh, I have go to a fucking doctor and shut up, right? <clears throat> but like instead of going that purport like disproportionate just be like yeah this is not really realistic um here's what you could do and then give your own advice instead of just saying no to everything you know see if you even have the ability to give good advice which i don't know if you do um instead of just shitting on her obviously like silly advice you know that seems like a, a bit a bit under like i said you're better off um, if you're going to track your calories, which is a good idea, just make sure that you maybe go sit at what the app, like if you do my fitness pal says as your maintenance calories, or there's another one that you don't have to pay egregious amounts of money for because they added this crazy monetization, uh, thing into it. Let's see if I can find it. I think it's called my net diary. Yeah. So that's another one, something like that. Uh, so yeah. And just kind of work from there and try to eat somewhat consistent because then there's like the whole lot concept of thermogenics where different types of uh, food will increase, uh, will have different, it'll require different amounts of energy to digest them. So that's another thing too. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to put that out there. Advice, because everyone is too afraid to be fat. I was at a big fancy Hollywood event years ago and Gwyneth Paltrow was there. Yeah. Or as she had everyone refer to her as GP. GP. And she was at a table nice. with Rachel Zoe. And I'm not going to get too deep into Rachel Zoe, but I have my own opinions. Okay. Let me just name drop everybody. <laughs> and it was a seated dinner and we had 
a set course, a set meal. Okay. And she loudly had to let everyone know in this very tiny room with Natalie Portman, Catherine O'Hara, you oh, name it. Who else? They were there. That her and her table, which were a handful of her close friends, as she said, that they were going to have something different. Pizza. But not just any pizza. Cauliflower crust pizza with no cheese. And I'm not sure. Oh, that pussy. That cauliflower pizza. Go on. Do your thing. Okay. But everyone just Sorry. laughed. Like, Cauliflower pizza, it's funny because if you go, if you look at the nutrition facts, a lot of I'm going to, I'm already know what going to say. It's unfortunate because it seems like they put a lot of, they actually, they actually seem to put like different things in the cauliflower crust. So it's not just a cauliflower crust. They also put like a, a human diarrhea in there. Um, so I think they put like tapioca powder and stuff in there. Just shit that's not necessarily good for you. I don't know how much better tapio uh, cauliflower crust is. I really just don't know. It could be good for you. It just seems like another, like with the Impossible Burger, like another bullshit thing where the Impossible Burger is still full of like bullshit additive fillers and like carbs and stuff like they do at meat. Um, it's still full of preservatives. It's like, is it really any better for you? You know? <clears throat> A lot of times, like those, especially like the pre-made ones, they'll actually end up having more calories. Um, I'm sure it has something to do with like how they have to get the to make the cauliflower actually like stick this together. This kid's gonna right? have to take my kill. I don't know. I'm not an expert. Um, uh, there's a place called Blaze Pizza um, in, in America. They're they're like scattered around, um, but it's like similar to. There's a reason for this. Uh, it's similar to like Chipotle, where it's like, build your own. So you build your own pizza, and it's funny because the cauliflower crust pizza, because they have the calories marked, is one of if not the highest calorie crust that they have. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I, I'm not saying that she was eating it because it was lower calorie. It doesn't seem. Um, I, I mean, that's, she, I don't think she needs lower calorie. Um, it's just funny because a lot of times people will, they always equate, oh, cauliflower pizza, blah, 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 with being lower calorie. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's true. I don't know if it's necessarily for lower calorie, though. I think it's more to be um, lower bad carbs, I guess you would say. If this, I look at more of as like a diabetic food of like, oh, I have cauliflower instead because it doesn't use wheat flour. But I think cauliflower ingredients or cauliflower pizza ingredients are still not the best for you. Um, does the Impossible Burger claim to be healthier? It kind of. I mean, I don't know if they explicitly say this is healthier, but that's kind of the point, no? Um, oh. Flour, pizza, crust, ingredients. Um, I guess it depends on where you're getting your cauliflower pizza from, but I wonder what the ingredients are. I, I, I don't even have cauliflower crust pizza on me at my house. I usually do, but I don't, so I can't look it up. When in reality, it could have very much, very, yeah, very lower much GI load. Is that what it's called? Like a lower GI? Is that like lower, um, like, um, <laughs> blood sugar or whatever? Is that what you're talking about? More calories in that pizza. Gluten intolerance? Right, that makes sense. In, like in the pizza like it was no big deal Busy. and i'm not here to judge what people put in their bodies especially i am i mean <laughs> come on it seems like you absolutely are and it's okay if you are but like come on you can't have your cake and eat it too let's be real especially as someone that has a restrictive eating disorder and i get mocked all the time because i'm fat so how dare i talk about not feeding my body right? what oh. restrictive eating disorder what does that mean um, what is a, okay. Restricted food intake is a fairly new eating disorder. Children with this are extremely selective eaters and sometimes have little interest in eating food. They may never, <laughs> uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm not the doctor that diagnosed her, but what I'm looking at, um, limits how much food they eat or <laughs> Okay, is when somebody avoids certain foods, limits how much food they eat, or does both? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's a new addition to DSM-5. has been known a feeding disorder for instance here. Okay, or uh, another one. What would you... What? She's just anorexia? Does that make sense? She has a fucking compulsion. She's fat. Like, how do you have anorexia? Does she just not eat and then binge eat? Wouldn't that just be a binge eating disorder? Extremely picky eating. I make sense, but like she's eating a lot of the pickiness. I I just uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm skeptical. She's fucking fat. I just it doesn't read to me that you would be obese if you had this thing. Most of it seems to say that you under eat. 
So like I'm not the doctor. And I'm not saying that she's lying, but I'm I am saying that you could if you're rich and you're looking for a diagnosis, I don't know. <laughs> you could find it, you know. I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. I I mean, listen, I'm not the doctor, so nothing I say really matters. Truth, you son of a bitch. Doesn't really matter truthfully, but mm, I'm a little skeptical of that. Oh. Right. But this shit isn't normal, and it's affecting a whole other generation of young folks who think that eating like GP is appropriate, is okay. Well, the same for and you. I'm not saying that I have all the answers. I mean, obviously. I would honestly say that you're worse than her. Well, I think we all know Gwyneth Paltrow's a fucking idiot. I mean, from what I heard, I don't think anyone's like, oh, I mean, I doubt a lot of people are like, yeah, let me just eat fucking bone broth and vegetables today. But I mean, you're... Dude, I'm not trying to be fucking mean. But, like, if you look at her whole body, like, she's fucking big. And that's okay. But, like, it, it, you you know, as a, as a Hollywood person, you know, if you're a big body positivity model, and maybe I'm just wrong, but most of them don't talk about how dangerous it is to be this fat. <clears throat> um... So, like, are you doing that? Because if you're not, like, this is unhealthy and dangerous. And it is for me, too. Like, but I tell you that constantly because it's necessary. And I know it's hard to lose weight. But I feel like if you're someone looking at her who doesn't seem to speak out against how unhealthy and bad this is, then you're worse. So, I don't know. You know, I, I just, dude, come on, you big stinky bitch. Sorry. This guy stole something from me. Not you, Tess. You're very beautiful. Maybe you smell. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's move back. Yeah, you don't. Clearly. <laughs> and I have it figured out because I sure the hell don't. But with all the talk about Ozemic and all these other weight loss drugs, <laughs> like, it's exhausting. Wait, wait, wait. These other weight loss drugs. <laughs> you said Ozempic, but it said Islamic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, people seem to be using Ozempic to lose weight instead of its intended purpose, which is to, you know, not have diabetes or to control your diabetes. Um, but I guess it's better than doing nothing about it. So, Oh man, that's funny. Um, sorry. Uh, but I, I think it's frustrating because now it's like, it's clear that she has this like almost vitriol to people that are do, like trying to lose weight and, you know, trying to maybe using Ozempic or semi-glutide, any, any of those drugs to um, help aid in the weight loss. So they decide to get weight loss surgery. It's like, it's just frustrating because it's like this movement has turned from I want to accept my body to if someone is they, they themselves working on something, working on their body. And again, in your words, you don't know what that person's going through. You don't know what health issues they might have. You don't. Oh, well, yeah. No, the body positivity movement should be like I love myself. So I like work on myself and better myself. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem to necessarily be that. Um, but I would say that like the criticism of Gwyneth Paltrow isn't the problem at all. It's that she's not giving counter advice. And so from what I know about Tess, and maybe I'm just wrong, she doesn't advocate for people to lose weight in a healthy way. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But it doesn't. she doesn't seem like the kind of person that's like, hey, here's what you should do. You should do this. You know, try to eat. You know, don't starve yourself. I don't know. I could just be wrong. But she's not giving counter advice, which I think is like a really dumb, toxic behavior because you're just being so ambiguous. And even if she does these things without being a little bit more intelligent and nuanced about the conversation... So people are going to extrapolate meaning or are going to extrapolate a meaning the less information you give. And it can be annoying and exhausting to constantly have to qualify everything you say. But at the end of the day, um, if you have like a young person listening to that and all she says is, oh, Gwyneth Paltrow is stupid and bad and her diet sucks and you give no counter to that. People, a lot of people, myself included, are going to interpret that as like, oh, well, what are you saying then? That like you shouldn't diet or what? Like what's your advocation? What should you do instead? Um, and so then that's kind of where your problem comes in. But she could have said something like, yeah, you know, I think that this is too restrictive. You should probably maybe count your calories or um, do this or do that. That's like healthy. You know, don't restrict yourself so much. Like that would be fine. But she's just kind of making fun of Gwyneth Paltrow in this kind of very, I would say, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? This very like loose way. But there's nothing specific, so it's just kind of lazy.
You don't know why they might decide to lose the weight, right? Why they need to do that. Or even if they just want to do it, you don't know why. But then to make people feel bad for doing that is just so frustrating to me. Like, I really can't stand that. Drugs, it's exhausting. It is okay to feed your body. Carbs are not the devil. It's also okay to like be in a deficit and try to lose weight. This, this is the stuff that's frustrating. It's like either you're feeding your body or you're starving yourself and you are like damaging yeah. everything. It's just ridiculous. Don't kill it's this like there's no I'll middle ground. It's up. like, yeah, of course, it's okay to feed your body. You don't need to be freaking starving yourself, but it's also okay to not, you know, listen to every single craving that you have and just honor every single little craving it's like dude it's okay to, to be in the middle and be like yeah you know like would i like to have cake today maybe but like do i need it probably not that's not like you doing some terrible evil deed to your body it's you understanding the consequences of what that means and so you can decide do i think that it's worth it today if the answer is no okay if the answer is yeah you have the cake i mean if you track the calories you can don't kill that bro i'll fuck you up pussy um but then have the cake bro have your cake and that's eat it okay too. that's nothing there's nothing wrong with that right Fat isn't bad, and I mean fat in your food and fat on your body. Yeah, see, that's the problem. It. It's like fat on your body is not bad, obviously. Everybody has fat, but too much is bad. And Pat Tess Holiday has unhealthy levels of fat. I have unhealthy levels of fat. It's not, that's what I'm talking about. Like, what? what's the message that you hear as an overweight young person? Oh, I'm fine. That's what that, and maybe she doesn't mean that, but that's what I hear. Oh, I'm fine. You're not going to be fine. And the problem with saying this, especially to young people, is that you're not going to feel shit. You're not going to feel the negative impacts for years. It's not going to be until you're 25 or 30 that you really feel the negative impacts of being fucking obese. Um, and so, you know, you have to start it young, though. So, like, you got these people that are like, oh, I'm 20. I'm fine. I'm really, I'm, a, I'm 150 pounds overweight. I'm fine. And it's like, they're not, but they don't know that you're going to get hit like a fucking truck when they turn 24. Like, you know, like I did. Um, they don't know that, so they think they're doing fine. And by the time they get there, they're like, "Damn, I'm fucked," <laughs> you know. So I just don't like her advice. It's shit. To an extent, right? I think that having not being completely shredded is totally okay. I would say it's probably more healthy than being shredded. I won't even say probably. It is right, but having excess yoked and yeah, is not good, baby. and then being too shredded is not good. Like there's a middle ground here, and I don't think the middle ground is like some tiny sliver of people. I think there's a, <laughs> lo a there's a large middle ground, but there's I'm certainly fucking once diced, you get to the baby. edges. Look at my orc. He's diced it's as no fuck. Longer. Too too small, too large, and bold. that's not healthy. That's I not okay. Know. Like th those are going to come with consequences, whether it's right now or in ten years. Those things, you know, those bills are going to be paid, right? The people are going to come knocking on the door. It's not bad, but hey, anything for a dollar. Yeah. Sounds... Anything for the cost of people's mental health. Has how she ended that. But she actually ended up doing another TikTok that she oh, I think deleted. Shit. I couldn't find it on her page, but I was able to get a, a clip of it Damn. where someone was kind of Super talking smooth. about themselves using uh, weight loss drugs. She had a response to that, so we'll go into that next. This is the comment that she's responding to, and it says, "I've adored you since I started plus size pinup in 2014, and I feel this 100 percent. And as exhausting as GLP-1 medication is, it's saving some of our lives." So she's talking about like weight loss medication. Makes sense. I want to apologize for not being maybe clear on this in my video, but obviously the medication being used for what its intended purposes is absolutely fine with me. I want people to have their medication and I want people to know that. So basically it seems like she's kind of talking about like this might be someone that's struggling with diabetes. And so that's what the drug was first, you know, created. Yeah, for. that makes sense. Um, you sh I personally don't think that you should take it for weight loss because then you get dependent onto it. And once you come off it, you're fucked. And I think it, there's also like a bit of an Olympic shortage. So for people who need to get it, um, that you're not going to be able to get access to it. That being said, if you really are not losing weight, you know, it's better than doing nothing, right? So uh, it's unfortunate, but you're better off taking it. Don't take that. And losing weight than not, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, sure. And now it's being used for people trying to lose weight. Um, I don't no. think, like... I don't think there's anything, in my opinion, inherently wrong with using the drug to lose weight. What I do think is just I important is bit, that if but... you are going to decide to do that, just weigh all the, you know, the pros and the cons, because there are cons with any medication, right? There are going to be side effects. Weigh all that stuff out. Obviously, it's not free. Um, hopefully, you can find ways to make it cheaper, but I don't think that it's free for anybody, but I, I could be wrong. I don't know. But usually, it's not free. Um, so you're gonna have to pay for it and understand there are going to be consequences of it. And for a lot of people, it's it's a it's a chronic thing, right? So it's something you stay on for a long time, just like yeah, with, you know, blood sure. pressure medication or all of these other things. You can improve it, but usually doctors would recommend that you stay on it until you you know get to a point where it's definitely not needed, right? You're gonna be taking it for a long time. So those are all things that you should weigh out. But again, that's going to be at a person by person basis, and you you decide what's best for you, right? Sure. Yeah. Because of celebrities like this taking advantage of a drug and using it in a way that it wasn't intended. It's causing real harm to people like this 
that need their medication and can't get it. So I'm not judging anyone sure. who takes this medication. Hell, I'm not even judging you if you want to use it to lose weight. It's your body. I... You I just, I'm not sure if I believe that. Like, I, I think that's just saying that wait, because wait, 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 from wait, wait, the actions it. that she's shown in countless other ways, like she absolutely is judging people for using it too, just to lose weight, right? I, I mean, maybe. I don't think that that really matters. I think the bigger issue is that, again, she's being very ambiguous about weight loss and it doesn't seem like she advocates for it. And that's my bigger issue is that she's not like, yeah, you shouldn't be fat. Like I would say like, you shouldn't, it's bad to be fat, try to lose weight, don't hurt, beat yourself up over it. Um, but also, you know, I just wouldn't do it medication wise or something, whatever, you know, <laughs> like a hundred percent in my opinion. It's just when people that have huge platforms <coughs> hmm. overuse and abuse and glamorize hmm. things like this. Uh, what does that sound like? <laughs> yeah, it sounds Who's like this holiday yeah. platform that over glamorizes things and makes, you know, being unhealthy completely okay. And like it says that everyone should be the same and that you should like you shouldn't lose weight and you should be okay with how be you are. fat i wonder who that is that caused <gasps> real harm because there's a massive trickle down effect whether they want to admit it or not yeah there is <laughs> that's my opinion on the whole matter i just thought it was interesting because it's these two people oh, that i just there we go. don't really agree with <laughs> and it's interesting seeing the uh the, i mean it's not like they're going back and forth but seeing one person be upset with what the other person's saying and what it's funny because i don't even doing? agree with what uh, gwyneth is saying but i definitely don't agree with what tess is saying I you know i don't even need the mob that these guys want to kill but part of me wants to attack it just so that i can upset them what do you guys think about that Oh, uh, no, never mind. They got it first. <laughs> Either, and it's just funny because I, I really feel like both of these people, um, they like, with Gwyneth, it, it feels like, this is just my opinion, okay, so I'm just spitballing, but it feels like she is so off in La La Land, she's been a, a celebrity for so long, and is just in this other realm, where it's like, she really thinks that she's helping people, and like, that's a problem, like, it really, really is. <laughs> but then with Tess, I just, I, I get this other sense of like, she knows what she's doing, and it's all you about bitch. optics, and it's all God about trying it. to uh, cultivate this... <sighs> This you persona, right? Um, and so, I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of both of them, is basically what I'm trying to say. But I just wanted to share that. I thought it was interesting. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Bro, Thank you so angry. much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay. Peace.